dear uh, colleague, uh, friends, comrades, brothers and sisters, I greet you with all the greetings that you like and you adore. Good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We are still living uh, inside the fear and the horror of Corona or COVID-19. I just lost one of my cousin, second cousin last week. And please take it seriously. Whether you believe in the conspiracy theory or not, this is beside the point. The point now is the virus become a fact and the fact that it is actually sometimes deadly. And for the young people like all of you, because they think that they are strong, the immune system is good, they are powerful, most of the cases in hospital in UK are affecting the young people who are under uh, 40 and are not vaccinated, and the majority of deaths is from this group. Please, please, please take it seriously. Today, we're talking about episode number uh, 16 of Fatfada 5 to 5. We're talking about uh, making an apology today to the animals and to the birds and to the other creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll explain why later on, inshallah, when I explain the drawing which in front of you, which I drew last week. First of all, let us thank our colleague Aya for present, making the PowerPoint presentation. And here we go. When one of us does a mistake, stupid mistake or unintentional mistake or any mistakes, we quite often when we come angry, we swear at him or her with an animal's name, you donkey, you dog, you cow, you whatever you call it. Why? What is that to do with the animals? Animal did not do any wrong to you. So why you, we always describe the wrong action of the wrong man or the wrong woman as he is or she is like an animal? Why? Let's go and look at the definitions and how the lang linguistic books in Arabic and the others talk about who are the animals, what are they, and what are their functions, and what we are benefit from. First of all, the quadruped, the animal which walk on four legs, which you call it in Arabic, Bahima. Bahima is an animal for riding, beast, brute, kept on a farm, and regarded as an asset. As I mentioned, ox, goats, cows, buffaloes, and all this, camels and others. And this is mentioned in the Holy Quran. The dog, also one of those quadrupeds, walk on four legs, extremely sincere, and faithful and loyal to his master. Even sometimes with loyalty, he can defend his master till death. He can die to defend his master or uh, uh, his uh, uh, mistress. Does not backbite, backstab you, does not betray the master. And also mentioned in the Quran, if you remember the, 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 the surah of the cave. The donkey is extremely organized, committed to his job. When his master or her master, uh, her, uh, uh, his master uh, gave him a job, Okay, he dedicatedly committed and fulfilled it and achieved it. Hard working, does not make any complaint, take the burden, and he's also mentioned in the Quran. The young uh, donkey, we call him in Arabic language, Jahsh, Jahsh, Jah, Jahsh. The mule, you know the mule, which we call it in Arabic, Baghl. Bagl is a byproduct of the sexual relationship between the female horse, which is called in Arabic faras, with the male donkey. Strong, fast, very patient as a donkey, and strong as a horse. 
patient as a donkey and strong as a horse. Having very strong immune system. Strile cannot produce any more little ones. Used heavily by the military. Why? Because he as animal. He as animal uh, can carry loads through the most difficult, rough, mountainous terrain. But he is a stubborn animal. If his master upsets him, he becomes angry, offload what he has on his back, and commits suicide by jumping from the top of the mountain. Also mentioned in the Holy Quran, al bighal wal Hamir. The female baghl or the female mule, we call it in Arabic, na'al. Na'al. The byproduct of female donkey with male horse have the same character of her mother, which is the donkey. Also used like al baghl which is the male one. Both of them is tried. The family of the cows, the buffalo, the calf, bull, and the others, they are sharing the same characters, most of the characters. Used in wagon pulling, cultivation, mill rotation, operating water wheels. I've seen the good old days in, the, in, 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 the, in the Asia and in the Arabia. We are benefiting from it a lot, from its meat and milk, skin, bowels, blood, dung, and everything. Calf and cow are mentioned in the Holy Quran as well. The buck, which is the male goat, and the quote in Arabic, tes. Tes. Uh, have two characteristics, apart from what we mentioned before. As a male, he can still produce milk. And of course, sexually, he can fertilize his female for sexual productivity. You have the same characters of the buffaloes, meat, and all this kind of meat, milk, and uh, skin, and, 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 and. Goat is a uh, bucks female, and we are benefiting from it as we benefit from cows and bucks and others. The pig, another animal, having many benefits and harms, forbidden by Quran, by Allah, on Muslims. But it's used by other religions, and they eat it, they use everything on it. But we as Muslims uh, do not uh, eat its meat, and it's forbidden. Swine, which is called halluf, which is a wild pig, wild pig still eating sometimes, if you can catch him, uh, by non-Muslims. And one of the extra benefits from it, it is from hair. They produce the hair and paint brushes. So all those animals have a common function and benefit for all of us, beside their heavenly function that they worship Allah 24-7. So why should we insult them by calling us their names when we do something, call it you are pig, you are swine, you are dog, you are why? Why? What they didn't do anything to us. Allah also said in the Quran in Surah Al Nahl 49, and to Allah doth obeisance all that in the heaven and on earth, whether moving, living creatures, or angels. Everything is worshiping Allah. Everything is prostrating for Allah. Everything is kneeling down for Allah. Mentioned in the Quran that none of the creation of Allah, all of the creation of Allah, keep worshiping Allah. And to Allah prostrates sujood, whoever is within the heavens and the earth. Yani every creation of Allah in heaven and the earth is prostrating for Allah, willingly or by compulsion. And the shadows as well in the morning and in the afternoon. So when we prostrate, our shadow prostrate. When we kneel, our shadow kneels and so on. But the last ayah, which is from Surah Al-Hajj, 
it is very important for us to see it, to make the distinction between the animal kingdom or the other creation's kingdoms and the human kingdom. Do you not see, that's what Allah said, that to Allah prostrates, prostrates who? Whoever in heavens, number one, and whoever is on the earth, that's number two. And the sun, number three, the moon, number four, the star, number five, the mountains, number six, the trees, number seven, the moving creatures of Allah, all of them prostrate. When he came, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the human being like me and you, and he said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and many of the people, not all of the people, and many of the people, not all of us, prostrate for Allah and making the full worship to Allah. Because some of us are believing in him, and some of us are not believing. And if you look now at who are the true believers of Allah, we find the portion or the proportion of those believers and those non-believers. But upon many of the punishment has been justified. And he whom Allah humiliates, for him there is no bestower of honor. Indeed, Allah does what he wills. So all creation of Allah, even stars, moons, everything, prostrate. But not every, actually, and, and, and many of the people, not all the people. This is a difference between us and them or between them and us. Let us talk about some sayings of other animals about human beings. Especially in the story of Suleiman, salam, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him the ability to understand the birds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught him how to understand the birds. Once upon a time, he was sitting with his companion and he was telling them the story of the four little birds. And he told them, do you know the story of that? For the four little birds said, no. He said, we don't know. Allah and his messenger know better. He said, the first bird said, I wish that the creation means a human being was not created. The second bird told him, told the first one, Okay, I wish when they were created, they knew why they were created. The third said another wish, and they said, I wish when they knew why they were created, they acted accordingly to what they knew. Number four, the, the, the fourth bird said, I wish when they acted according to what they knew, they were sincere. So this is the judgment of the four little birds on the actions of you and myself. Also another day, he was sitting with his companion and they listened to one of this nightingale, bulbul, we call it in Arabic bulbul, standing on a tree branch and singing. He told his companion, do you know what this nightingale is saying? He said, Allah and his messenger know better. He said, I just had half a date. Ah, pardon be upon the whole world. This is the most that I can have. I'm enjoying as if I have the whole life for me. Here's the bulbul, which is a singing bird. I'm not sure what you call it, Robin, in this country or not. He said, he listened to another wailing and mourning pigeon standing on a tree branch. And he told them the same. Do you know what he's saying? He said, they said Allah and his messenger knows better. He said, we wish that Allah did not create those people, you and me, because they keep observing us. Special human being, keep observing us. And you knew when they have been, why you have been created, but you knew and you saw our action. Many scholars talked about the communication between King Solomon and the birds and the animals. Let us talk about what they said. Pigeon saying, prepare yourselves for death. You construct what you construct 
is going to be destroyed because you are leaving it. The peacock was saying you will be rewarded to what you have done or what you do. The hoop bird saying Allah is merciful with those who are merciful to others. The ababil birds, the, the birds who, who actually killed the elephants in front of the Kaaba, saying, saying, forward your good deeds to find your rewards before Allah. The pigeon saying again, glory to be to my Lord, fill his, his sky and the earth, the most high, 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 subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cat saying, whoever stays silent will be safe in peace. The parrot saying, woo, to those who made this life their burden, only think about their life. The cook saying, are you inattentive? Remember Allah, the male uh, chicken. The frog saying, Oh, my holy Lord, making tasbih to the holy Lord. The little bird, which is a small one, could be Reuben, could be a little nightingale, or whatever you call it. Oh, guilty sinners, ask him his forgiveness. The buzzard, which is a dark brown, big uh, bird flying, saying everything is dead except his face. This is some of the hearing of Prophet Suleiman to what the bird were actually worshiping Allah or even talking about ourselves. Also, remember the story of the Suleiman with, uh, with the ant and with the hoop bird. I don't, I'm not going to talk about them. Prophet also had an incident happen to him when he was in Medina. And some of the people from Medina came to him rushing said that we have a very wild camel become mad in the farmyard of one of our brothers. He said, where is the camel? He said, there in this farmyard. He said, show me. He said, please, prophet, it becomes more, more like, more, more, more dangerous like, uh, than the, the wild dog. He said, please show me the camel. He entered the farmyard and the sooner the camel saw him, the camel kneeled down and prostrated in front of him. Like a little kitten. Then Prophet Sallallahu came closer to him, touching his head, and listening to him. And he complained to Prophet Sallallahu on two things: the the workload that his master is giving him, and which is bad treating him. The second thing is little food he's giving to him. He came back to the young man who was owning this camel. He said, where is the owner of this camel? He said, me, Prophet He said, please treat him well and feed him well and be careful. Don't overburden him. The same thing happened when the Prophet found that actually the little children, the young children in Medina, taking some chicken, some, ch some chicks from their mother and playing with it. And the mother was standing there in a state of fear, said, please, young little children, don't scare the mother. Give the little chicks back to her mother, to the mother. This is how those animals and birds feel about us and how they have been mentioned by Allah that all of them perform them function rightly, better than most of us, Plus, worshiping Allah 24-7. So why should we insult people by calling them with the animals' names? I was surprised by those people who are not fulfilling their duties like myself in life and are calling others who are non-human, which are the animals and birds, who are fulfilling their duties with animals' names. According to the universal system, uh, every creation has two duties. First, worship Allah. Second, to perform their duty. And they are doing it better than most of the people, like myself. One of my friends was telling me, was telling, why are you talking, talking about all this? Why, why all this? Why are you talking about animals and all this 
من سالت and why you compare animals to human being and all these sort of things I was reading some comments on decision made by some what called superhero presidents or kings or princes and how cruel and brutal was such decisions to whom to the poor unprivileged disenfranchised members of the community we don't care about them Uh, that's why I was extremely upset and I was trying to compare between such individuals who are in a very high seat, the executive power, and the behavior of animals and birds, and the opinion of animals and birds on us. Uh, how? Yani, the question came back in how? Yani, what happened? Those leaders want to apply what literally literally inch by inch a letter by letter what leaders of developed and advanced countries in the western world are doing without considering these factors what factors temporal factors geographical factor cultural factors, economical factor, political factor, moral, educational, social, or even the period of time it took them to achieve that. Just to want to take it like this. I remember one of my uh, friends in the late 80s, he said some of those uh, people went to the state and found this skyscraper, said, let us build skyscraper in our country. And they started building it and they didn't know why the Americans were doing it. Just like this, like an image. Uh, and this, in the good old days, we used to have when we were little children, a song about a bear who wanted to, uh, uh, there was a fly standing on the face of his master and he wanted to remove this fly. So instead of using his hand to, or maybe a branch of a tree to let the fly uh, fly away, he brought a very big stone and throw it on the head of his master. So instead of letting the fly to fly away, he killed his master. And the song in Arabic, I'll, I'll say it because I said it in Arabic in another talk, uh, which is cuddling bear or panda love her master and the fly standing on his head you know sleeping Instead of getting the fly to fly away from his head, he's throwing this dark stone on his head and killed him. And those presidents are like this bear, killing their people, torturing their people, brutally torturing their people. Then one of my colleagues was asking me why. Yeah, and why, why are you saying all this? Why they are doing that? Why they are doing that? Why they are doing that? Their belief, the belief of these leaders that the solution always, always must come from abroad. It's number one. Number two, the belief of those leaders that the human resources, the national human resources are always subnormal. Subnormal or substandard. The third one, their fondness to the foreign intelligentsia, intelligentsia and their loyalty to those or foreign social institution and intellectual ideology. They're fond of everything come from abroad. I gave you an example. 
one of the culture at Tashe, one of the embassies, you know what he was telling his people as a student, postgraduate student in the late 80s? I want you when you go back to your own country, that everyone on the street, when they look at you, they feel that you are coming back from UK. What does that mean? I don't know. You know what he said again? You know, there's no much difference between your nose and your sexual organs. If you walk naked, male or female, same. Your sexual organ is an organ and your nose is an organ. Your ears and organs. So why should you cover it? And this is how they were so fond of the culture of the people in the different countries. Which is number four, their prostration to the cultures and values of others. Lack of their patriotism to all countries, to societies, they're not patriotic to their culture, to their values, to their religious. No, they are not. They're not very proud of that. They are rushing to pick up the fruit, which is unripening fruit. Like when you see the mango fruit on the tree yellow, you go and pick it very quickly. And when you peel the skin off, find it better. You have to wait till it the, the, the change the color. Change the color. Rush into picking up the unripe social fruits. And they think that these imported solutions are the most successful and fastest solution to create the needed social change. Number seven, not being aware, this is very important, of how much suffering these nations in the West or in the East have gone through for decades to reach what they have reached. Individuals, communities, institution, leadership. Number eight, their lack of awareness of the time scale or the number of trials, as I mentioned, of the leaders, institution, try it, try it, try it, try it for 10, 20, 30, 40 years till they achieved what they have achieved, whether they're in the West or in the East. Number nine, lack of their understanding, those leaders, like the bear, lack of their understanding to what do we mean by freedom and what is the capacity of this freedom. Tell those people who are presidents or kings or whatever it is, they have to provide such freedom to the citizen. First, before they ask them to become like other nations. And for they ask them to think about using this important solution, laws, policies, procedures, and intellectual cultures. Number 10, their inability to apply the ethical standards, ethical standards to the citizen. What are the ethical standards? It's respect, recognition, activation, empowerment, listening, partnership, accountability, transparency, social justice, equality, fairness, benevolence, and others. Before they ask their people to become like those other nations, they have to apply these ethical standards on themselves and on their people first. Lack of the understanding to democracy or shura, democracy in consultation, referendum, and engaging every citizen in the country and choosing their official future leaders, the direction, the path, the roadmap. Number 12, not being aware that the citizens of other countries, with developed countries, are living inside what? Civil state, civil state, civil state. Not security or military states. Who are making the citizens afraid of their shadows? Behind them. They are letting their citizens to live in a military or secure state instead of fear and asking them to imitate a 
a civil state. Lack of the encouragement, encouragement. They don't encourage science and scientists, research and studies, analysis and applications, consultation and opinion expression, others. No, they don't. Spend all the money on security and military. Okay. Opinion in their countries is vertically descending from the skies. Skies of whom? The skies of the miraculous leaders. He said, or she said, so this descendant of the opinion of the leader has to be holy, like the holiness of God. It lands on the people. The miserable citizens, and they have to implement it. No discussion, no opinion. Such citizens of this country have no opinion, voices, or points of view to be heard. The lack of the national identity. They don't have national identity. And they love, they love to look like the other countries. Dreaming to be like them like this cultural attaché, which I mentioned, what he said. The societies will discover one day that such leaders were not citizens. They've been imported by their enemies, planted in their countries to control their countries, number one. Do not belong to the religion, not belong to their culture, not have the same values, and not really truly citizens. They are like spying agents and made president and king and the queens. How do you know that? Oh, yeah. My friends keep asking me all this question. How do you know that? Let us observe what they say and what they do. I'm not going to speculate, to be speculative. First of all, Listen to the philosophy of the societal discourse, speeches that does not encourage, first of all, the citizen to belong to what? To the history, to the culture, to the values, to the manners, or to the religion, all the time attacking the religion, questioning the authenticity of the religion. Change their productive countries into consuming countries. For the sake of whom? Of foreign countries and foreign institutions and personal interest. Number three, they throw the doubts in the societal constants. There's some constant in every society, such as religion, as I mentioned. Why Christianity? Why Jesus? Why Muhammad? Why Quran? Why, 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 why? and they want to change the religious discourse. Such religion, their ability, their trust in their national staff, the national you know, human resources, and their culture and values. They don't, they want to brush off their values and their culture. You know, when they speak to the public, they use excessive, now when, uh, when they speak to their uh, public, they use terminology, bizarre terminology, trivial terminology, which is very awful. Nobody can understand to keep people thinking that they are philosophers. The bizarreness of their used terminology, triviality, and solecism of their speeches. Using the iron fist, heavy, excessive security and military power to control their countries. Their policies are frightening, dividing, and fragmenting their societies. Their government's laws, policies, and procedures become the main repulsive force for whom? or scientists, thinkers, researchers, pioneers, opposition groups, and leaders, politicians, societal leaders, 
professionals, academics, whom we consider that each one of them is a critical individual who can, when they sit down in a very conducive civil liberty space, create the critical masses, which can make the change. And who is going to be left behind? Brothers and sisters, the silent masses. They are very happy to get those people who are vocal, knowledgeable, to kick them out of the country, as you can see it now happening nowadays. And the rest become the silent masses. Just keep keep following, keep, keep, keep observing this. This is my answer to my friend. Say how I said observe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The change they change their countries into what? Into very widely sprawling prisons with high ceilings and much more, much higher prison walls. The citizens of, of such prisons will be frightening one another and frightened, frightened from one another. Frightening one another and being frightened from one another. So the, the state or the country become a big, big sprawling prison. They are killing what? Creativity, pioneering, innovation, and the initiatives created by citizens. You don't want anybody to be on the, under the hotspot, apart from the president or the king or the queen. They change the state into an absolute central power state, where all the powers will be in the hands of the absolute leader or the absolute overtaking political party. Ally themselves with number 10 or 11, with whom? With other similar autocratic, authoritarian, dictatorship, security, and military states. And other observation. I give you 11 observation. I'm not going to judge anyone. So I'm asking you to look at this. And accept, if you want to accept what I'm saying, it's up to you. If you don't want, it's up to you. And other observation that you can follow up and find, but they will keep you busy. By what? By the deceiving, hypocritical, fake media covering, which is the black magician of Pharaoh. The second question came from my friend again. How to deal with those people? Okay, president, how to deal with them? Or ministers, or, 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 or. We have to deal with them according to these logicals. Four logicals, four, four. Number one, they could be ignorant of not knowing what's going around them. we we'll give them good intention. They could know what's going on, what they are doing, but they have personal vested interest. It's number two, bad intention. Number three, they are working as agent to foreign countries or foreign power or foreign institution for their interest, not the interest of their own country. It's bad intention. Number four, they, they know what they are doing because they believe in it. That's what they learned in the West or in the East, but they don't have any vested interest and it's good intention. Two is good intention, one and four, and two is bad intention, two and three. How to deal with group number two and three and group number one and four. With the first and the fourth group, which is the good intention groups, becoming closer to them, winning their trust, engaging them and finding the reasonable national solution, national solution, convincing them with societal partnership with you and those others, discussing the solution and not attacking them, representing to them alternative solution as well, 
using what's suitable from their solution and complementing them with other ideas and solutions that you believe in. Respecting and recognizing their great efforts. Because if you know that they have good intention, you have to respect them. Making them take the lead in different meetings. Feel that they are home and leaders. Number 10, letting them to feel that they are the solution's owners even if the solution is yours. Number 11, agreeing with them on roadmap or roadmaps together to implement different solutions. Number 12, convincing the societies with their solutions and representing them to become society's leaders. Number 13, providing them with different young people group to help them, to promote them, to support them as well. So this is from group, the first and the fourth group, the good intention groups, okay? How about if they become from the bad intention groups, whether for best interest or they're working for uh, foreign, uh, become a foreign agent for different foreign countries. Don't start confronting them, it's number one publicly, especially publicly. Trying to create a dialogue with them. Trying to find out the lead of their plans and discover their bad intentions. You have to discover it. You just don't build everything on speculation. That's number three. Number four, presenting alternative solutions or modifying their proposal. Yani, if you did a dialogue, and you know that they have bad intention, you still have this kind of room for discussion. Number five, you yourself keep building a lot of partnership with other groups. Because one day, there may be a confrontation between them and you. And when the confrontation comes, you'll be surrounded by another partners to support you and to help you. Number six, focusing on Directing this, bus, uh, this uh, your simple, clear, constructive media discourse. Simple, clear, constructive media discourse to whom? To all citizens. Not to the citizens of the church, or in the synagogue, or in the mosque only. Trying hard to follow the fact finding, not the speculation strategic policies, and do not formulate your opinions on speculation only. No, no. Number eight, trying to win the support of whom? Of the broader masses, not only your group, your core group, your club, your political party, or your religious group, no. What are those grassroots brothers, young people? Women, least educated, liberal, working classes, elderly, and pensioners. Quite often, we ignore them. If confrontation is going to happen, is the ultimate solution, you have to calculate the following. It's social, financial, intellectual, economical, political, security, and culture consequences. Because you have seen what happened when the deep states create this counter-revolution and everybody put in prison. Talk about if confrontation happened, why you, 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 are, you are a little bit scared of this, number nine. Confrontation is the ultimate solution of to calculate these consequences. Why? Because this confrontation could lead to the following. This confrontation could lead to the following. This confrontation could lead to the following. One, revolution or counter-revolution. Two, political or military coup that we cannot control or calculate their damage on social or their damaging social impact. Also, 
during this confrontation, you have to calculate something else, how to protect your colleagues, your allies, your partners, your supporters. From what? From the mob of this group with bad intention. The vulgar, noisy, demagogical crowds from the, if the solution will create the hurly burly social chaos. So number nine is extremely important to calculate the risk and the consequences of the confrontation. Number 10, trying to discover the deep states, whether they are in the country or they are connected to other countries and other institutions. And the connectivity between these deep states in the country or these deep states between the people in the country and the people abroad. During the state of confrontation, we have to understand that the battle is not, is not one round could be many incalculable rounds, many incalculable rounds. You watch football, you like to support football, it's 90 minutes. You score the goal in the first 10 minutes of the first half. If you want to win, you have to keep it till the whistle will be blown after the 90 minutes. The whistle of the referee. We have to raise generations, this is number 12, who can understand the destructive systems and organizations to our countries. Yani those younger people that you have to nurture and bring up and mentor, you have to keep nurturing them to understand this foreign power or destroying your uh, identity, your economy, your country, your history, and so on. This is if they are from the second uh, and third group. My message to you young people, we have discussed together many strands while navigating through the different paths of this talk. Firstly, how Islam is respectful to all the creations of God that were created to serve human and humanity. But Islam and the Holy Quran and the teaching of the Prophet went beyond that by mentioning how such creations are very keen to worship the creator on one hand and perform their duties to serve a human and humanity on other hand, because this is how they're being created. Secondly, how bad are or were the humans when dealing with one another and with other creations as well? Not only that, but calling the bad humans with animals' names, in spite of the fact that such creations, animals or birds, are very efficient and committed to perform their duties. Thirdly, the opinions of other creation on man. Fourthly, leaders, president, kings, queens, ministers, and others, their abuse, their abuse of the executive power and authority, the brutal torture of the citizen, and the injustice to the citizen whether they have good intention or bad intention. Fifthly, how to deal with different leaders having bad or good intention. These five things that we discussed. But my message to you young people is about that the different axis of social work, different pillars or axis of social of social work should be built on fundamental constants. All those different axes and pillars should be built on fundamental constants. Amongst them are the 10 constants which I'm going to mention now. Number one, 
in yourself and myself, self striving, self striving, purification and reviewing. I have to do it myself. I have to do it myself. And this one of the elements of the social reconstruction syndrome. Number two, the depth of your community belief, how much you believe in your community, your knowledge to the variable society in your community, your faith, culture, values, manners, morality, history, intellectual, philosophical principles, and social infrastructure. Do you believe in this? Do you have the knowledge of this or not? This is the second fundamental constant in making the social and uh, creating the syndrome of social change. Number three, the available social solution could seem to you simple, but and easy to execute. But believe me, they are exactly the contrary. The older the societies, the more intertwined the complicated composition of societies become. And the more complex became the implementation of the social solution. Societies in countries like Iraq, Egypt, China, Yemen, very complicated because it's very old sites. Number four, of this fundamental constant, patience, planning, social coexistence, and cognitive experience are a part, practical part, are a part of the syndrome of social change on the practical level. Number five, education and learning, failures and success, Striving and uh, perseverance, sacrificing and exertion are a part of one another. Community solution syndrome. Uh, a part of another community solution. And all these, if, if, if we talk about the community solution syndrome or social change syndrome, find all these six points are a part of the social uh, change syndrome or community solution syndrome. Don't forget that manners and morality are essential component of the same syndrome. Number seven, if you are keen to use solution or successful on other, in other developed advanced countries, you have first to study the causes of their success, which are based on their culture, values, experiences, manners, morals, and others before implementing them in your country. And if you are still convinced with such solution, you have to modify and tailor them according to the social principles of your sites. It's not one size, can fit all. Number eight, invest in discovering the local talents and in discovering the pioneering children from early days of development and develop them. And this, as I mentioned in one of the talks a few weeks ago, what happened in Singapore. That's why the advanced world education system. Invest in discovering the local talents and pioneering children from the early days of the development and develop them. And if children like arts, like music, like poetry, like design, like for sports, uh, like uh, becoming a, a scientist, like uh, geography or medicine or chemistry or mathematics or algebra or whatever you call it. In um, I Singapore, used to make special schools for those talented individuals. 
benefit from the success stories happening in developing countries as well, not only developed, especially if they have circumstances similar to yours. Number nine, you have to be aware that there are many stages for social reconstruction. Starting how, first stage, waking up, second helping, assuring, rehabilitation and training, social empowerment, the beginning of rebuilding stages, development, sustainability, stability, intellectuality, innovation, invention, pioneering and others. I mentioned 13 stages, it could be more. And the wheels of social reconstruction continue as long as, long as there are societies there. If you found the society, they need to be visited and to be uh, reconstructed again, socially. Number 10, social reform and reconstruction will not succeed. And this is, look at it, the most important, that's why I left it till the end will not succeed unless we establish what we call the civility of the state. No guns, no knife, no stick, the civility of the state. And we provide everyone with the adequate and required and sufficient civil liberty spaces. If we don't have that, forget it. To make any social reform. Young people, please, Remember that the process of reconstruction is a never ending process and is an industry having everlasting phases of its past. It never ending, it's an industry. Be sure that I am going to be with you from the zero point because the industry of construction or the construction process is the industry of the construction process of people's life. It's not bricks and stones and roads. It is people's life. People's need are never ending. You cannot please every human being. If you decide that, let us rely on Allah and make it happen together. I thank each and every one of you for being patient to listen to my talk today. And please try to respect animals and birds because Allah has created them to help us in becoming the custodian of this universe. And use them, not abuse them. And don't use your people if you are a president or a minister or a king or a queen or a prince as numbers. Without your people, you are nothing. The people or the citizens are the country owners. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.